Hello everyone, my name is Alberto, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna show you how I did the embroidery of this Victorian Christmas card. It does feature a dead Robin. Not exactly sure why. It Apparently I did a bit of research and it seems like they used to think it would bring good luck. So there's that. I, uh, I'm using a very, very simple sort of cotton calico fabric. It's um, quite rustic and cheap, but I do really like how it looks. And I did the previous drawing with my favorite pen that I show you in every video, uh, just because it, it's basically erasable with some steam. And what I did is I slightly modified the text so it would be curved and fit into a small hoop, which is the circle you see around it, which is where I want to put it when it's going to be done. I'm just using this big one because it has a stand and it's a bit easier to film because it was quite awkward to sort of position it. What I'm doing here is that I'm sort of using a um, modified satin stitch which means that I'm creating as you can see these sort of little structures underneath the little 3d parts and then I'm creating a border around the whole drawing with the back stitch and everything you see here is a, a double thread I've seen people using even four or five threads to make it quicker I don't particularly like it, so what I did is I used the double to make quite a thick border and then I'm going in uh, and creating sort of the top layer with a single thread, that way it allows me to make it a lot denser. And then I picked some uh, techniques from what I believe is called thread painting, which is, again, going with a very fine single thread and pull a lot of different colors, and that will let us create all the different shades and um, break up sort of blocky colors and create a more of a 3D sort of realistic looking embroidery. So here I'm going in with the base, as you can see, which is sort of the same full color, just to uh, create something that's a bit more opaque, especially because again, we're trying to respect the 3D elements that would be there. So this nice belly is more filled in while the wing is sort of skinnier and wispier at the end. So I recorded this um, using this big loom because it had uh, feet, basically, so it was a bit less awkward. I, I found it quite difficult to sort of try and stand it up. And that's why I will have to move this to the actual embroidery hook. It's gonna go in later. Here, as you can see, I'm blending in a darker chestnuty brown, and here, after a while, I've added some gray into the back of the neck, some darker brown, uh, a lot of different colors. I'm doing a darker orange now, which is, it's a bit difficult to see on camera, but trust me, in real life, you can see it, and you can see all the different shades. This takes a long time, so it's difficult to get an idea of how it's gonna look when it's done. That's why it's quite useful to keep a reference to check uh, for the color blending and the different shading, so to keep it as realistic as possible. So here you can see I'm going in with the lighter, sort of sandy brown and again it's a mixing of uh, all different colors taking from the reference image now 
this whole process took, I would say, about a week. Um, not of constant embroidering, but doing about an hour or two a day. So this is why I had to film sort of snippets just to avoid having a three hour long video. But here you can see the colors adding up and they start softening up so you don't see them as starkly different as before. So the more you add, the more they kind of merge together. And I at least personally feel the result looks so much better. This is a super interesting and cool technique. I feel like it's a, a bit different from the traditional sort of stat satin stitch embroidery because it brings a bit of a painterly quality to it, hence the name. Here in the tail, while I'm adding the lighter colors, I'm also adding a slight sort of crisscross pattern because the tail feathers are longer and they have a bit more of a texture. But here you can see it's almost done. For the lettering, I decided to go with black and to go with a very simple back stitch just to keep it as sort of minimal and kind of old-timey print font. Uh, you could do it so many different ways, but it I just thought the most simple minimal would look the best for this sort of vibe. So again, yeah, very, very simple. Backstitch just going over the different lines and trying to keep the curves as best as possible. Here, as you can see, I'm just blasting it in order to delete the pen marks with some steam. And I'm keeping it on the loom to cool down. That way we avoid stretching it. And also I'm not touching with the iron the threads. Once that's done, we can remove the loop and take it out and then we can fit it on the actual finished loom. This is an embroidery loop I got on Amazon. It's made of rubber actually, just sort of to mimic wood, but it already has the hook to attach it to the wall and I think it looks pretty good. Uh, another thing that's pretty good is the tension once you put it in. Quite even, quite nice. Um, obviously would have been easier to just embroider in that, but again, I needed a stand. The extra fabric, I just remove and um, give a quick overlock all around. You could use pinking shears just so it doesn't fray. And in order to finish it as decently as possible, I'm going to do a quick running stitch all around just sort of to gather the fabric in the back. In this case, I just gathered it, since it's gonna go against the wall. But if you want, you could do uh, an extra layer of finishing by cutting a circle to the exact size in maybe like a thin felt, and then just stitching it on as a backing. And that would be a better finishing technique. But in my case, I just thought that this was quite nice. So you just redistribute the gathering to have it as even as possible. Tie a triple knot and cut off the thread. And if it remains a bit puffy and you want it to obviously be as flat as possible in order to go against the wall, then you can just give it a quick press just on the back with the iron in order to flatten the creases as much as possible. But I think that looks quite good. So this is the final result. I'm very happy with it. I hope you liked the video and it was interesting. 
for you as well. If you did like the video, please put a like and subscribe to the channel if you aren't. It is a great help for me. And thanks, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.